Go ahead. Uh, you probably, I probably said this before, but uh, it bears repeating. Uh, you ever see them bumper stickers that say a good day or bad day fishing is better than a good day working? Well, a bad day saved is better than a good day lost. And if today, if you're saved and today was a bad day, just nothing worked right, <clears throat> this was better than the best you ever had when you were lost. So just keep it in perspective, okay? Just remember that uh, you did all right today. You woke up on your way to heaven and you're still going there now. So, All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 4. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 4. I like this chapter. I, I like everything that uh, goes on in it. <clears throat> it is a good chapter. You get a whole lot uh, out of this chapter. We're going to look at just one little part of it. And I'll tell you what I really like about it. I really like uh, what's going on in heaven right now. <clears throat> you know, uh, you've got a crisis or a problem. Make sure this thing isn't booby-trapped again. Um, <clears throat> you've got a crisis or a problem. You know, you think that all the world needs to stop and pay attention. Don't they know? Don't they know my car's not getting good mileage? You know, some real crisis. And um, <clears throat> I so appreciate that um, uh, if you read the book of Revelation and you see what goes on in the tribulation. I mean, water turned to blood and locusts and all this stuff. And, um, and then the scene will cut to heaven. And you don't find God up there going, Oh, look. Oh, oh. it's all. He's, They're all just praising Him. Completely detached from what goes on down here. Well, I'm glad I, I've got a God that is literally sometimes I'm glad that He is detached from my problems. Now, I know He takes a personal interest, but I'm glad that, uh, <clears throat> you know, heaven doesn't stop and mourn, uh, you know, when I can't get the parking spot at the mall that I wanted. You know, well, those real tough things in life, you know. And so uh, let's take a look. Uh, let's take a look here at verse... Um, well, I like all of this... Um, all right, I'll just start at verse one. This is um, this is not my uh, text, but <clears throat> some of you, this is all the Bible you're going to read today anyway. So we'll give you more than a verse. <laughs> After this, I looked, and and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet <clears throat> talking with me, which said, "Come up hither," and I can't wait to hear that. I. Uh, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat uh, was to look upon <clears throat> like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a glass, a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Don't buy glasses for this crowd. Contacts would kill you. You lose contact, wouldn't know which eye it was. <clears throat> Verse 7, the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle, and the fourth beast had each of them six wings round, uh, about him, uh, and they were full of eyes within, and they, now look at this, rest not day and night. Does that mean that what I'm about to read is going on right now? I like that. I like that. You're laying under your car, you know, griping about the oil plug not going in properly or something, and up in heaven, He's just being praised and praised and praised and praised. <clears throat> Here's what they say, verse, uh, verse 8. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is is to come. Let's, uh, let's talk to the Lord. Father, it's good to be saved. God, I'll tell you what, it's not just good to be saved, it's good to still be saved. Amen. Father, if you could revoke it, you should have. I Probably everybody here should have had theirs taken. I know I should have had mine taken. So God, I thank you, Lord, not just that we're saved, but that we are still saved. And God, if there's somebody here tonight and it's been what they would call a bad day, and I, God, I empathize with them, Father. I understand. We're human. We're clay. 
Uh, we get bothered by the things of this world. But God, help them to remember what it was like to be lost. God, it just doesn't compare. Father, a bad day with you. Uh, a bad day saved, Father, so much better than a good day lost. God, if somebody in here, I don't care if they won the lottery when they're lost. God, if they're here tonight and they're saved and don't have two dimes to rub together, they are doing better. So thank you. Now, God, there is a message here. I pray, God, that you will uh, present it, <clears throat> that you'll put it across, that you will uh, speak to the hearts of each individual here. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Verse 8 says, The four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they had... Um, Oh, wait, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go up to verse 7, verse 7. First beast, oh, let's go up to verse 6. We'll just read it again. <clears throat> Before the throne were, was a sea of glass, like unto crystal in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne uh, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And you read about these beasts, they've got four faces. I've always tell people that's, that's, that's uh, twice as many as a Baptist, all right? <laughs> and um, it says in verse 7 that <clears throat> one, one beast... Uh, the, of the beast, one face is like a lion. Or, I'm sorry, the first beast was like a lion. The second beast, uh, like a calf. third beast had a face of a man. <clears throat> and the fourth was like a flying eagle. So there are four faces represented. Now, you know, there's a lot of things that you would think did not get represented. No, there's no rhinoceros. And there's no kangaroo. And, uh, you know, there's no fish in there. So what we're just going to do is, I'll just take a few minutes, we're just going to look at what I think these four faces represent. Now these guys, uh, as near as I can tell, are in a, a subservient role uh, in where they are. I kind of visualize the throne, the sea of glass, these guys kind of supporting that. <clears throat> and uh, while they're doing that, all they do, all day long, uh, the only time they take a break from praising God is when the four and twenty elders start their thing. Okay? These guys say, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was, which is, which is to come. And that sets off those 24 guys that really get excited. And then they've got their little thing. They go through, cast their, their uh, crowns at the throne. <clears throat> and then when they're done and they all get seated and they all get comfortable, one, these guys must be a little sadistic. Because they know what's going to happen, don't they? And they go, come on, let's do it again. You know, my wife's grandmother, uh, grandfather, grandfather, he was an old saved Methodist, and um, uh, when I met him, by the time I met him, he had Alzheimer's. Uh, well, they didn't have Alzheimer's, it was uh, senility back then, I guess now it's Alzheimer's. But, um, <clears throat> and uh, every time I met uh, Grandpa Albert was the first time. Every time. But we'd get talking, you know, and we'd get talking about the Lord, and pretty soon he'd go, Brother, you talk like a Christian. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I am, you know, and, and we'd have good fellowship. And, uh, and then it came time for him to really uh, to go home to be with the Lord. Now, he was in a nursing home, and he was unconscious, didn't know anybody. <clears throat> At that time, he didn't know his, uh, uh, my wife's, uh, uh, my mother-in-law, which um, was probably a defensive act. But anyway, uh, um, <clears throat> he didn't know anybody. He was kind of out, and I went in, uh, and uh, I was, um, he's kind of unconscious, you know, and I thought, well, I know he liked the Bible. I'll just read the Bible as I... Just opened up the book uh, of Psalms. I began to read, and, and he, and it got him. I mean, he's laying there out, and and as those words are going in the air, he he's like this. He's going, you know, this guy couldn't stay in a coma, <laughs> and he finally opens his eyes and he goes, "Brother, it's you." <laughs> it was just like that book, you know. It just kind of moved him, and so these guys, you know, they couldn't. Those four four and twenty elders couldn't stay seated if they wanted to because. Um, <clears throat> These guys get it going. Well, the first uh, beast had a face like a lion. And I'll tell you what I think the lion represents. Uh, now, these are, again, all subservient to our God, right? <clears throat> I think the lion represents the noble and the bold. You know, we think of lions, what do we think of? We think of king of the beast. We think of royalty. Uh, you know, uh, brave and bold and not afraid of anything. You know, the, uh, the, the nobility of the world is going to be subservient to our God. I think years ago, um, back when, now, now, there was a time when there was nobility, when the leaders of nations had a certain amount of it, and, and uh, Queen Victoria, uh, who was a saved lady, <clears throat> they asked her uh, what, uh, and I'm trying to remember, get this right, uh, what she thanked God the most for. 
they knew she's a Christian and they knew that, uh, uh, you know, uh, they don't like that, but they knew she's a Christian. They asked her, what do you thank God the most for? And she said, I thank God the most for the letter M. And, and they said, the letter M? Well, why on earth? The letter M? I mean, why do you thank God for the letter M? And she said, because in Corinthians it says that when a God calls him, he calls not many noble. And he said, if there was no letter M, it would say not any noble, and I couldn't have got in. She said, I thank God for the letter M just so that, hey, you know what? That lady was the queen of the, of the British Empire. And you know what? She'd gladly get off her throne, take off her crown, get her robe off, and get down her face to our God and say, holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, which was, which is, and which is to come. Amen. You know, there are some people that just tend still to be noble. Now, don't worry, Bill Clinton has never been mistaken for one of those. Man, when you got, you know, there are so, you, isn't, it, isn't it nice to know that there are just some adjectives will never be associated with his name? Amen. You know, noble, courageous, honest, you know. <clears throat> I was in this restaurant one time and uh, somebody asked this lady, uh, the waitress, about some kind of food and she said, it's good. And they said, well, have you ever eat here? She said, uh, they said, you ever had it? And she said, well, no, not really. But everything here is good. And I said, lady, you keep on lying. You're going to end up president. <clears throat> You know, we used to say, you do that, you end up in jail. Now, uh, you're going to end up in a White House. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, there are some noble people, and the noble people will bow their knees to the Lord Jesus Christ. And there are some brave people and some bold people. Uh, I think of uh, back in the, in the uh, Old Testament, I think of Joab. Now, I don't care what you think of this guy. If you were going to get in a fight, you wanted him on your side. All right? Right, wrong, or indifferent, this guy takes somebody's head off for you. And uh, you think about him, you know, uh, <clears throat> here's he's fighting. They're, they're facing the Syrians and the Assyrians, and, and uh, they got him surrounded. And this guy doesn't worry about his uh, avenue of retreat. Uh, he, doesn't, he sure didn't have no stress card. He goes to his brother and he says, look, he said, I got these guys. And he said, we'll face these guys. You face those guys. If I have trouble, you come and help me. And, and if they have trouble, I'll come and help you. And uh, you know, did you ever notice it was like, nobody ever asked, what if we both have trouble? Well, the chapter will end in the next verse. That's what will happen. <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> you know, that guy was bold and he was brave. I like something Doc said. It's something I've always uh, uh, tried to get across to people that courage is not the absence of fear. You know, people think that, uh, the, that you are only courageous if you are, are not afraid. People, the absence of fear, that is not courage. The absence of fear is stupidity. Okay? I worked with the guy that wasn't afraid of anything, and I'm going to tell you right now, he was nuts. We'd be two stories up on a two-by-four plate line, and he'd have an end of a truss in his hand running. You say, ooh, he was brave. He was stupid. I'll tell you who was brave. Me. I got the other end of the truss. It's in my mouth. I'm hanging onto that wall with two arms and two legs, and I'm going, slow down a little, slow down. I mean, <laughs> you know what some of you are, are going to serve God just as soon as you aren't afraid anymore? Well, let me prophesy for you, then you'll never serve God. If you're going to wait to street preach until you're not afraid, if you're going to wait to door knock until you're not afraid, if you're going to wait to witness until you're not afraid, you will never, ever, 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 ever serve God because you will always have some amount of fear and God is not going to take that fear away from you. You know what you're going to have to do? <clears throat> you're just going to have to conjure up the courage to overcome your fear. Have some courage. Have some bravery. Have some nobility. Be a little bit valiant. Be a little bit bold and just go out and do something for God. Yeah. <clears throat> Brother Haven and I were at a bookstore today and uh, he started witnessing some, some fella. I uh, gave him a track said hell on it. and The guy said, I already been there. Did you marry my wife's sister and know my mother-in-law? <laughs> well, you know, I said probably been to Vietnam. You know how that thing is. When I die, I'll go to heaven because I already spent my time in hell. Sorry, you won't. That's got nothing to do with it. But I want you to know that there have been some battles and there have been some men who have been brave. 
There have been some men who have either given their lives or been willing to give their lives. Men like Joab, men like uh, that, that would stand up. You know, uh, Sergeant Alvin York went out <clears throat> on a patrol and brought back uh, 285 German prisoners. We should have sent two of them and the war would have been over. <laughs> you know what you do when you surrender? You walk up and give the guy your weapon. What do you do when 285 guys hand you a rifle? Good night. They could have killed him just laying them on him. You know what he did? He reissued them. He said, give them back. And I gave him back to him and said, just carry them until we get to my lines. So here's these guys. Here's 200. There's a company of German soldiers, you know, marching up there. And here's Sergeant York. He said, boy. I'd like to be that brave. Yeah, that was brave. Don't you think he wasn't afraid? Yeah, come on. I mean, how would you like to have, uh, I don't care, front, back, or either side, you're marching these guys to the front lines, and they all got their weapons, and what happens if one of those guys decides to reconsider? But you know what? The brave. The lions. The people that will go at anybody and anything. You know what they're going to do? They're going to bow their knee to our God. I don't care how bold you are. Listen, there are somebody may make you tremble. I mean, they may be tough. You see these, these steroid pumped up over inflated, uh, uh, wrestlers that think that, uh, I don't know what they do, yo, whatever their, their big act is. <clears throat> and they count themselves as bold and brave. And I'll tell you, they're going to be down on their nose to my God. Yeah, that's right. It says there one had a face like a calf. You know, the calf represents the devil. The Bible said that the serpent, the devil was was above all cattle. You know, there are just some folks that are wicked. Now, there's some people that get mad and lose a temper, do something stupid, or, or are ignorant, or, or are overcome by their greed, or some spirit of the moment. But you know, there are just some folks that are just as wicked as a day is long. That book says, you know, that book says over in Proverbs, there's some folks, they don't even sleep unless they've made somebody stumble. There are some people that when they get up in the morning, they just ponder, how am I gonna, how am I gonna bring somebody down? How am I gonna cheat somebody? How am I gonna lie to somebody? What am I gonna, how am I gonna, am I gonna get away with my crooked ways today? There are just some folks who are wicked. And they're not all outside of our churches, in case you didn't know, okay? I mean, some of, you know, some of them, the worst thing they ever did is teach them to write. Boy, they learn how to write and they write anonymous letters and contact people and <clears throat> get on the telephone and tear up churches and destroy ministries and, and uh, tear up uh, their, their brethren in Christ. You say, what are they? They're wicked. See, we did have a section for Bill Clinton. <laughs> you know the wicked are going to get down on their face to our God. You got the Shirley MacLaine's that, um, I don't know, she thinks she's a tree or something. I wish somebody cut her down and now, I say this for Madeline Murray O'Hare. She is now a Bible believer. King James, the whole nine yards. Boy, her and uh, Carl Sagan are comparing notes in hell right now. And those people, you know, Gene Dixon <clears throat> and the readers and advisors. You always like Gene Dixon. I, you know, she'd have these prophecies like it's going to be hot this summer. Uh, it's going to be cold this winter. Uh, there's going to be some storms in Kansas, you know. You know. Watch the Florida coast around October, you know. And then when something happens, she'd go, yeah, I knew that. I knew that right there. You want to prophesy something, go to, uh, don't do, that, do this now, but just sometime read 1 Kings chapter 13. 1 Kings chapter 13, this man of God walks over there. Here's Jeroboam. He's just built an altar to, uh, in Bethel. And <clears throat> this guy goes, oh, altar, altar. Uh, you know, he says that uh, a child shall be born uh, of the house of David. Josiah shall be his name. He's going to knock down this altar and men's bones are going to be, he's going to burn your bones. Uh, on this altar, and that boy was dead before the chapter was finished. And 351 years later, 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 15, that book uh, records a, a man by the name of Josiah who was the king, who was the house of David, and he was at Bethel, and he knocked down that altar, and he poured out the ashes, and he found the graves of those high priests, and he brought their bones up there, and he offered them right on that very altar. 350 years. Now that's a prophecy. That's a prophecy. 
Oh, try this one, man. Try this one. I'll put enmity between thee and uh, thee and the woman and thy seed and her seed, and thou shalt bruise his heel and he shall bruise thy head. <clears throat> hey, listen, man. And four thousand years went by. And the snake thumper showed up. Isn't that right? Now that's a prophecy. And you got all these charlatans, you know, and their little uh uh, they're little scams and lead you off into some kind of, hey, hey, what are you doing reading a horoscope? Amen. Well, you know, I don't believe it. I, yeah, I know. You just read it every day. I'll tell you what's going to happen. One of these days you're going to read it and something is going to happen that day in your life that's similar to what you read right. and it's going to destroy you. Right. There are people tonight that are vile I preached in a church one time. There was a man in that church who was, a, who was saved. Before he was saved, he was a homosexual. You know what that guy used to I mean, he talked with a lisp and everything else. And you know what he used to do? He used to pray that God would make him talk like a man. I mean, <clears throat> if I took you into that church and I'd say, find the guy that used to be a homosexual in this crowd, you'd point him out that quick. You know how he got to be homosexual? His brother died of AIDS. His brother's a homosexual. You know how his brother got to be homosexual? Their father and mother raised them to be. That is as wicked as hell itself. There are some evil people in this world. There are some vile people in this world. There are some people who do some unmentionable, unspeakable things to children. They're all going to be down on their face to my God. The calf will bow. Okay? It says that there is a face. <clears throat> one has a face like a man. I think the face of the man represents the humanists. Now I'm talking about today's humanists. Alright? I'm not talking about Erasmus. You know in the Bible a liberal was good, wasn't it? Well, a liberal ain't good today. And Erasmus Day, <clears throat> a humanist was somebody that just wanted to try to free the, the common man from the oppression of that ruling elite. Today, a humanist is Ted Turner. Don't you dare ever think that there's any similarity between Ted Turner and Desiderius Erasmus. And you get guys, you know, uh, the humanists, and uh, they exalt man above God, and <clears throat> they exalt the pleasure. Hey, they're all going to bow their knees. Ted Turner is going to bow his knee someday. I don't care. He, God may make him go get his Humanist of the Year award first. And say, now hold it in your hand, kid, while you get down on my face. You heard about his wife. I was, we were talking today. I, I went into a meeting some time ago and somebody said, have you heard that Jane Fonda got saved? I said, now who did that? That's almost a shame. I said, next thing you know, they'll get Roseanne Barr and I'm not going. They're just some folks you ought to... Listen, you see them come down the street, just don't you dare waste a track. No. But... <laughs> I don't want to go to heaven. It's on the other side. But um, the humanists, men of science, Einstein. I'm those guys, you know, there are some, there are, there are some tremendous intellects that have lived in this world. You know what they're going to do? They're going to get down their face to my God. That's their Sports figures? My goodness, people. Don't you think we've gone a little far when we have to have ESPN 2? <laughs> I, 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 I was like, uh, you know, I was like, you just like. You just like to watch. You know, it used to be this <clears throat> in the old days. And I'm not saying we need to go, but go back about a hundred years ago, maybe a little more. Two men had a, had a dispute. They both walked out in the middle of the street, uh, drew their guns, and one of them dropped the other one, and it was over. Well, you know, that uh, that kind of evolved into um, two guys used to get mad at each other, and they'd go out and back behind the bar, and they'd just pound the snot out of each other until one of them said, okay, I'm sorry, you win. And then somewhere around my generation, that evolved to bet my car can beat your car. So nobody drew a gun and nobody threw a fist. We just went out to some 
two-lane isolated uh, quarter mile of two-lane highway and struck them off and somebody had come away with 20 bucks and a little shame. My goodness, we aren't even that aggressive anymore. Now it's, um, how about them bears? <laughs> you guys got to have a TV that's got two pictures at one time so you can watch two different games. And some, hey, listen, they've become gods. They've become such gods that they now think that they can murder at will and they don't even understand why they should be arrested. Uh, guys, I like sports. I like football, but if I never see a game, okay. That's okay. But man, they're turning, I mean, they're turning, uh, you know, come on. Uh, beach volleyball is now an Olympic sport. We'll have Olympic crocheting. Whoa, whoa, did you see him drop that stitch? Can, now the question is, can he make it in the time limit? Can he get the... Oh. Well, I don't know. I see tears going down his cheeks right now. This is a very emotion-packed moment. <laughs> We're at an airport in Kalispell. In Kalispell. Put my mother-in-law on a plane. She said, you think they'll have a seat? I said, Ma, I put it on the wing myself. <clears throat> anyway, uh, and this huge guy <clears throat> comes running up. Big guy. Highly tanned. And, and he's going to board the plane, and this lady says, oh, oh, will you sign this? And had him sign something, you know. And, and he looks down at my mother, hello, ma'am, you know, and hustles onto the airplane. And, and my wife says, who is that? Oh, I don't you know who that was? Well, you think we'd ask if we knew who it was, you fool? That was Shaquille O'Neal. He'll be down on his knees. Dennis Rotman will be down on his knees. Mike Tyson will be down on his knees. Every Heisman trophy that is ever a trophy winner that's ever lived will be down on his knees. Mark McGuire will be down on his knees. And that idiot that you allowed your kid to put their picture on his bedroom wall, he'll be on his knees too. Okay? That that you know, you let some guy come on, maybe put some other guy's picture on your kid's wall. Oh well. They get on the knees. And then lastly, it says there was one had a face like an eagle. And when I think of the eagle, you know, we always like to think of eagles when we think of freedom. And I think the eagle represents the free spirited. You know, the love crowd, the no rules, no fear, <clears throat> the, uh, the poets, the artists, those people who are above limitation. You know, the ones kind of walk around in a, in a half of a daze all the time. Oh yeah, man. That's God picked a guy like that one time. Don't you ever worry about a guy that's looking for himself? I picked this guy up one time. I said, "Where you want to go?" He says, "Oh, anywhere, man." I said, "Well, where are you going?" He says, "Oh, I'm just looking for myself." I said, "Well, you were back there a few minutes ago." I wanted to tell him, I said, "Don't look too hard, pal. You find yourself. You won't be too pleased." You do better trying to lose yourself. But you know, there is an entire culture. Man, you know when I was a kid we had a skateboard? You know what it was? It was a toy. Now it's a culture. It's a culture. I, I see these guys. You ever see these guys with bean bags? I mean, has a bean bag become a thing of a culture? <laughs> Give him an egg. <laughs> you got the, uh, like I said, you got the folks that say no fear and no rules and um, the, the, the surfer crowd, the, uh, the extreme sports folks. You know what they're going to do? Let me tell you what they're going to do. They're going to they're get down their face to my God. That's what they're going to do. 
I don't know what you're good at. I don't know what you, uh, what is outstanding in your life or in your personality. I just want to let you know, you get down on your face to Him. You like lines? I don't like lines. You get in a line. I was in a, I was in a town <clears throat> at a meeting and they took us to this restaurant. And food's nice. I like food. But they said uh, the wait is going to be about an hour. And I said, unless I go 40 days and 40 nights in the strength of this meal, it ain't worth waiting an hour. I said, let's just go to a burger place and get a burger. I hate lines. When you think of the people in this world that are noble and brave and wicked and evil, when you think of the humanists and the sports figures, when you think of the free-spirited and the poetic and the artistic and the, <clears throat> the extremists, don't you reckon that line's going to be long? Yep. Why don't you beat the rush and do it now? Bible says God has given him a name that is above every name, that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, <clears throat> and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now you go to your bedroom and you look at your little sports hero, and I want you to know they're going to get down on their knees. Are you ready for this? This is going to upset you, but that's good. You're going to see John Wayne get down on his knees. I had a guy say one time, I hope my boy to grow up like a real man. I'm going to be like John Wayne. I said, oh, you mean the guy that was never a cowboy and never a soldier? The guy that was a paid fake. Right? Well, look, I, I like the parts he played in the movies. So say I like the parts that John Wayne played in the movies. Don't say you like John Wayne. You don't even know him. And when he was dying of cancer, he referred to God as she. But he's got that straightened out. He's not looking for anybody to miniskirt up there. You know what I'm telling you? I'm telling you that every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess and everybody is going to praise our God. And I don't care how big they are and I don't care how in intelligent they are and I don't care how rich they are and I don't care how powerful they are. I don't care how good looking they are and I don't even care how much they fooled you. Some of you, your idol, the king, is going to get right down on his nose to my God. They're all going to be down there. And so, you know, just kind of as a um, for view, God just has this crowd. Oh, uh, he's like, yeah, I enjoy the lion. I enjoy the, oh, yeah, have the calf yell a little louder. Would you have the calf yell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, and the man, too. Those, those, those are the two that give me the most trouble. <laughs> and they're all going to glorify our God. And you know what you do well to do? You do well to do it now. You do well to do it <clears throat> right when you're upset with him. You do well to do it just when He dealt you a hand that you didn't appreciate. You do well to do it just about the time you start thinking you can handle everything all by yourself. You know what it's time to do? Every now and then it's just a reality check. It's just time to get down on your face. You know what? You, get down where you can smell the dirt in the carpet. Get out there where you can, when you get up, you've got to wipe all the dust and the dirt off your nose and off your chin and off your clothes. You say, I don't like that. For him it's okay. I didn't tell you to do it to some man. For him it's okay. And you know what? It'd just be good for you to just say, you know something, Lord, I just want to declare, I just want to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I thought I'd get that out of the way so that when that other crowd is in the line, I can just be off eating a hamburger and watching. Let's pray. Father, I thank You for Your goodness and I thank You for Your grace and I thank You for Your great kindness. I thank You for this book. And Lord, as much as we have a problem with pride, I am still glad that I am going to have to get down and bow my knees and bow my head and confess You before all. Now God, I will confess before this crowd that Jesus Christ is Lord for the glory of God the Father. But it's going to be good when all can see it. And Father, there is no one on this earth that is going to escape or be exempt. And that will be good. Not 
not for their humiliation, but for your exaltation. That's going to be good to see. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Bow our heads and be in an attitude and spirit of prayer. God's spoken to you. You need to come. The altar is open. Nothing between. Is there anything in between? Is there anything in between? Can't worship God if there's something in between. Something, something bad, something wrong, something sinful, something neutral, something that in and of itself is neither bad nor good. Has it gotten in between you and God? Even something good can become an idol. God needs to be God. He needs to be God in our lives. He, in order to be worshipped, there can't be anything in between. Let's spend some time in prayer. Thank you, Lord, that one of these days every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess. And Lord, we gladly do it now. You are the Lord of glory. We love you. We thank you for who you are. And Lord, forgive us for our idolatry, Lord. Every time something comes between us and you, any time we put something before or above or in the way of our vision of you, our fellowship with you, our friendship with you, our love affair with you, please forgive us, Lord. And may there indeed be nothing between. We pray these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to ask the marshals to come up at this time and sing us a couple songs.